Welcome to this episode of Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I'm Nick, and today we're sending Kizma off on a farewell journey. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, If you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Wait, it's not farewell. I'm coming back, everyone. I swear. (laughs) I figured that would get their attention. You're not going for good, but you uh, we're recording this uh, uniquely uh, from opposite ends of the country. Actually, we are. I'm in New York City and you're in Carlsbad. And hello, everyone. How is New York City? New York City's great. It's chilly. Um, but you know, I love it here and been getting lots of work done. Had a couple of VIP days with clients who were, are, are amazing. Uh, just taught the prosperity code tonight and calls with clients. So it's been good. Super exciting. Not much time to party it up, you know, like one would in New York City, but I did get to the Met last week. So that was really fun. The Met Opera. I know you love that. It just I speaks do. to your speaks to that gold. You're there for a short bit and then you're taking off and you're heading to India. I'm heading to India on Friday. Why are you going to India? Well, as many of our listeners know, we often reference the Vedanta Academy and Swami Partisarati. And it's been over a year since I've been there, which is too long. And sometimes you just get that calling, like, it's time to go. Yeah. And, you know, you and I have been there together. I remember our first trip there, which is probably, what, 10 years ago? Well, Zoe went with us. Zoe went with us, and she was like 13 or 14, and now she's 24. So 10 years ago, just a bit over 10. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. It really is a magical place. And I know that it's important. Like, it's really important. It's especially important for you to go there. And and I think it speaks directly to really the whole reason that we started this podcast to begin with. It does. Ancient wisdom. Ancient wisdom for modern day. Right. And we get that there is a cert, there's a certain section of you, quite a large section of you out there who may never make it to India. You've got life, you've got things, you've got other stuff, or maybe you just don't have the interest in making the pilgrimage. And all of that's fine. Mm-hmm. It's but this podcast really exists in order to bring that back to you, but to bring it back to you in a way that really can make sense in your life. Exactly. Yeah. And and to me, I think that's one of the things that really resonated for me when I first discovered Vedanta is like it, it's esoteric in a certain way. Like at the end of that, you know, his magnum opus, the the Vedanta treatise, he really goes into some pretty intense, uh, esoteric teachings. And it's always got that loop back to what are you doing in your life today? Right. Like, how does this apply? Like, what does it actually mean, uh, in, in, in the life of a business person in the life of a partner in, in the life of a parent, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think all those things are really, really important. Uh, to always bring it back to that. And and truly like, that's what this podcast is all about. Right. So what do you, you know, what do you, what do you think? Well, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, sometimes I love to get off into metaphysical tangents and we talk about energy a lot, which is always important. Yet the basic principle of Vedanta is intellect and mind. And the mind per these teachings are, is the center of the emotions. And I'm pretty sure we all know and all agree that when we let our emotions kind of run rampant and not guided, some interesting things can happen, um, sort of like a Shakespeare play. So it's the intellect that Swami Partisarati talks about in such a way where 
one realizes we have this gift to really create our life and to drive it and to cultivate it. It's just most people don't think about it in this way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, well, it does to me, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I hope that, I'm sure the listeners will um, pick it up. I mean, what we, the, the word that comes up so often in, in that world is objectivity. Objectivity. And that's a beautiful word. And basically, if I were to describe a way of being to our listeners that was objective, it's really about not taking things personally. It's about being able to observe and pause before responding. It's about being able to notice our own internal reaction and even to choose that reaction. So before we respond back to something, we were able to check ourselves and ask, whoa, is this in, for my highest and best? Is this going to elevate the situation? Is this even going to help something? So the objectivity is like rising above the world rather than being entangled in it. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I was just talking with some of my students about this very thing and dealing with the the mind. I was using it in a little bit more of a broad context, mm-hmm. uh, not the strictly Vedantin, you know, emotional center, mm-hmm. but really just the uh, habits and patterns of the mental processes as well as the emotions. And... It's like, this is how I think about it anyway, it, it is it's like the mind is so addictive. Yes. It, it just gets so wrapped into things. And, it, and it's not just getting addicted to things that it's liked, that it likes. It likes, it it's a, gets addicted to patterns. It, it, it gets, gets addicted to ways of being. It, it gets addicted to things that it doesn't like. And the drama of, you know, being in that, it gets addicted to all these things. And so the key piece for me with, Vedanta is building the muscle to break the addiction. Right. Whether it is getting addicted to drama or whether it's getting addicted to your emotions and needing them to be a certain way, uh, whether it's getting addicted to your own mediocrity, right? The same pattern, patterns right. that keep people in a, mm-hmm. you know, in, in a certain level of being or doing or having, uh, like whatever those are, it, you said it yourself is it's like, it, it requires that pause to stop, to reflect and to decide, well, is this actually in alignment with what I want in my life? And it seems so ridiculously simple, but it's actually one of the most powerful things ever. It's simple, yet we're in a world that is so busy and so noisy and our senses are being pulled out in many different directions. And on top of that, you place the paradigms or beliefs of whatever's happened in the past. And this is one of the things we've been really focusing on in the Prosperity Code, 90-day training to awaken your inner wealth and magnetize your money, is that people have money stories based on past paradigms. And we want to get that out and be as objective as possible so we can actually choose where we want our emotions to go up or down. We can actually choose to not take things personally. And, you know, the really fascinating thing is like when you talk about the mind in the way that you did a little bit more broad, the truth is the mind, which is not the brain, right? The mind or the center of emotions is in every cell of our being. So. This is the important thing, everyone, to hear is that when we get resentful towards someone, there's resentment in every cell of our being. It's not like it's just in one little place and we can pluck it out. It exists everywhere. And if we're walking around with resentment existing everywhere, we are anything from objective and we're going to attract more of the lower vibe stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. It's like, I'm just letting that soak in for a second. <laughs> it's a little bit heady yet. I think it's really important. And and then we could turn it and say, you know, what about love, you know, divine love, harmonization, um, love and emotion. Well, that exists in every cell of your being. So why would we not want to exude joy and love rather than anger and resentment? Because it's going to 
affect us. This is what we have to understand. The mind, our emotions, whether they are geared to somebody else, directed to somebody else or ourselves, they will affect our physical, mental, and emotional state of being. Yeah, it's like you can't you can't escape it. You can't escape your emotions. You cannot. And and I think that's something that a lot of people try to do. Well, they they, we they can, try to suppress mm-hmm. them for for one, or they get super into expressing them uh, in oftentimes in inappropriate ways, simply because they don't know what else to do with it. Or they this might sound familiar, everyone is you're trying to create a circumstance to feel a certain way, but that feeling starts with you, not the circumstance. And your circumstance gets created from your internal disposition. I know that's a wild one, but it's really true. Yeah. It's basically like, I see what you're saying is the misunderstanding is that when I have X, Y, and Z, or when things are a certain way, then I'll be able to feel what I really want to feel. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it actually has nothing to do with that. Right. And so it's an interesting pattern that it sets up because then you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting for you to, for you to get, you know, get the thing so that you can right. finally feel a certain way. But then that, it, but it's actually that waiting and that not feeling a certain way, which is preventing you from having the experience that you want when you could bypass the whole thing and just <laughs> decide to feel the way that you want to feel. And that comes with the intellect and the ability to direct it. Uh, we actually often refer to it as the subtle intellect, direct it with devotion and gratitude. That's the way to get out of to the lower feelings and into something higher. Yet, it really does demand the intellect. Because mm-hmm. well, we have to yeah. stop and drop and notice and observe and catch ourselves, right? So one of the biggest things, if I flash back to my days as a musician and a flutist, I could be a real diva and all like freaked out about if people like my playing or not, or was I getting enough attention? I had no intellect. I mean, I had an intellect. It wasn't developed like it is now. So the awareness of, wait, I could change this didn't exist. It was just the ups and downs, ups and downs of a performing artist. Yeah. And it's, and you tell me, like, was there a certain part of you that just thrived on that? Did it fuel you? you? Mm, I would say it must have because I continued. You know, it's kind of why we see people that repeat drama because in some way, until they understand a different way of being, the drama fuels them. It gives them a source of energy, whether it's high or low, it's a source of energy. Well, what did that, I mean, what sorts of things did that create in your life? I would say... You know, some relationships were good, others weren't. It was uh, exhaustion because whenever there's drama or worry about what people think, um, if you're getting, you know, enough attention or whatever, it's just, it's energy drain. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I was able to lock in and find that place of, I'm just going to show up and play and just play really well and be thrilled with it. And that was a whole different way of expression and it came after I got more in tune with what it what who it was I wanted to be. Hmm. And it's funny, you kind of landed in that and then you were done with it. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that funny? It's funny. Yeah. Definitely served a purpose. Yeah, it's interesting. I it's funny. I um I for in my own experience, I kind of landed in that in my yoga teaching at a certain point, and then mm-hmm. I was just done with it. I was Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And now I teach my one or two classes a year and it's like, great, you know, but it was, it was, it really did come back to that decision, but it was all the, it was all the things that had to happen along the way in order to land in that decision. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, I think for both of us, it sounds like we took the slower path to start. Yeah. A little bit slow path. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's not the fastest path, but what the intellect is the fast path for that understanding the intellect and then having the energetic tools to be able to clean up all the weird stuff around it. Like that's Mm -hmm. the fast, fast track. It really is. And for those of you listening, you're like, okay, well, how do we do it? You know, it, you could be like me and and run off to India every year. um, Or you could listen to more of our podcast and include in that, a lot of 
chunked out time. So say every morning or every night where you simply have self-reflection. You know, there's a lot of people, Nick, that teach meditation and meditate, yet the intention behind the meditation is to escape or to feel blissed out. I'm not saying any of that is wrong, yet there's few people that meditate to know themselves better. Mm. And we cannot change until we know who we are at a deeper degree. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, that's really true. So if there's ever a time to meditate, it's just think of it as self-reflection. Get to know yourself. Get to have so much courage that you can ask yourself questions without judging yourself. And that's one thing Swamiji is so good at. He's like, well, that's just going to be ego. You know, your ego is just coming up if you have to create drama or judge yourself or someone else. So drop the ego, get as neutral as you can, and just ask yourself, like, how did my day go? And when things show up, good, bad, right or wrong, however you're going to label it, simply notice, don't judge it. Don't try and go back and change it. Just notice it. And you can always inquire, like, was that in my highest and best? If not, think about doing it in your highest and best next. We have to have such a loving, neutral uh, perspective and disposition towards ourselves. Otherwise, it kind of gets too heady, right? Mm. Well, yeah, it gets. T- I think it gets too heady and uh, and heavy. Just heavy. And you heavy. Know? Oh my God, I did this wrong. I could have said that differently. It's yeah. not about that. It's really when you go through this and chunk it out, the essence of it is you'll begin to see exactly what kind of feeling, energy, emotion you were leading with on that day. Because I guarantee if you led a day with gratitude, the day's probably gone pretty well. Even if things came up, even if there was troubleshooting, very likely, you managed it. Mm. If one leads a day with anger, things are going to break or get disruptive. Yeah. And that's, that's another addiction. It's another addiction. You know, it's it's a certain emotion that gets used to Mm -hmm. uh, get things done. Right. (laughs) Yeah. I think it's always a really fascinating conversation, you know, and when I, I, I look at it, I really do think about it a lot of times as just like the addiction of the mind and to think about, uh, just to, you know, I think it's fair to think about like what you're actually up against. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, right. mind, the mind is super powerful and it's, you think about all the things that maybe not all of them, but <laughs> think about some of the things that you consume on a regular basis, whether it is the media or certain kinds of music, whether it's just the people around you and what they're saying, whether it's mm-hmm. it's the food that you're eating and how that's charged, or whether it's just the energy of the environments that you're in. Well, these are all the things that you're consuming on a daily basis. Right. And so all of that, like your mind is adopting that in some way, shape or form, and it's giving meaning to it. And, right. and so when you're starting to start to wade through the layers of that, wherever you're picking up the journey, whether you're brand new to this or whether you've been, you know, in the personal growth kind of uh, conversation for quite a while, you're picking it up wherever you're picking it up. And there's all those layers to start to weed through. Right. So to break an addiction to something that's been, that you've been doing for your whole life is something that requires patience and discipline Mm -hmm. and care and love. Right. You know, it really does. And I can't tell you like how many times I've told people or not really told them, but just invited them into the space of, Hey, what if, what if you took right and wrong out of your vocabulary and good and bad out of your vocabulary good and bad yeah what 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 would you do and it's like their brain doesn't know what to do with that (laughs) yeah you know there it it kind of falls into a void for a minute because that those simple labels like we we have so much information that comes at us on on a daily basis that we don't really have or take the time to discern Mm mm-hmm and so we make the fastest possible decision. That's, that's right, good, bad, wrong, mm. right? And so it gets put into this black and white space. And 
we miss the nuance. Right, exactly. And so the real sense of discernment isn't there. And then to get beyond that into the actual emotional content or the patterns of the mind, you know, that that remains an area for people that is just largely untapped. And that's why it's so difficult to break those patterns. Exactly. Absolutely. I totally agree. You know, I think it does, it can always kind of dial back into, you know, what do we want in life and who do we want to be in life? Because who we're being is attracting what we're having for sure. And if there's too much chaos, you know, we get to ask that question like, okay, what, what little rush am I getting from the chaos? What, what am I using the chaos for? And then to make a really clear decision, I'd actually rather have the peace. Mm -hmm. And that transition can be uncomfortable for people because it's a switch. It's, and it's actually, it's, it's a switch from mediocrity into excellence. Mm -hmm. And more people are uncomfortable with going up in life than going down in life. I'm going to say that again. More people are uncomfortable going up in life than going down in life because we challenge so many beliefs and so many paradigms when we elevate. We go against what maybe some of our family might think about us, our friends. We feel like we're going to have to step in in a bigger way, which is actually true. And it's really easy to kind of sink down and do those things that sadly are all around us in society. Just let's have an extra drink. Let's eat more sugar. Let's watch more TV. Let's smoke more pot. Let's do more of all this stuff that I'm not saying is wrong if it's done in a way that's every now and then. But when it begins to be the pattern that we sink down into, we're leaving life. Yeah, it's a default. Like it becomes a default pattern. It becomes a default. And sadly, it's comfortable to default. And life is here really to challenge us and evolve us. So if we, if our path in life is to evolve, there's going to be challenges. Like that's, that's going to be part of it. It's our perception of those, aka objectivity, that allows us to rise above and beyond the challenges and arrive to a new place. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. Uh, It reminds me of something that you spoke about really deeply in the prosperity code uh, Mm -hmm. with the toleration. Right. What are we tolerating? What are you tolerating in your life? You know, Right. Uh, what do you tolerate in your own brain? Mm -hmm. And I I think that's really interesting. And, And it's something that I've been thinking about in a lot of different ways, say, with regards to like, stress management. Okay, so you're going to manage your stress and and ultimately, you know, what do you do? What do you wind up doing with that? Well, you wind up, you know, increasing your tolerance for stress. So the, now what? Okay. Well, now you have more stress in your life. You can <laughs> kind of handle it, but do you really want more stress in your life? But it's because you, it's because you're going, it's going about it upside down. You're raising your tolerance for something that you don't want. It's the opposite of that. It's like lower your tolerance for that stuff because then you make a decision faster to get out of it. Right. Let it not be acceptable to have the low vibe hanging out in your life. It just can't be acceptable any longer. Yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. So there it is. Intellect, objectivity, neutral. I mean, that's the way to bring things back into control so that we can guide it. And hopefully our listeners out there are going to want to guide it and direct it upwards rather than downwards. Yeah. Well, hopefully (laughs) I would think so. Knowing our crowd, I am pretty sure that everybody's on board with that one. Um, But I'm excited for you. I'm really excited. I'm I'm a little sad that I'm missing it. Uh, I know, but you have things to do um, in California and just to give our listeners. So I'm kind of excited because if you do a couple of things, I've got a group in Facebook called Codes of Consciousness. And if you pop in there, you'll see me do some posts and photos, and I might even be doing videos there. And it's basically kismaawake.com forward slash groups. So mm-hmm. kismaawake.com forward slash groups. Um, ask to join, I'll let you in. Or follow me on Instagram, and my Instagram is instagram.com forward slash kisma awake k-i-s-m-a-a-w-a-k-e so i'll be doing lives i'll be doing posts you get to come to india with me i really am going to be there to study but i plan on 
once or twice a day popping in and getting some things out there. So it's like you guys get to go on the trip with me. Uh, that's exciting. I can't wait yeah. to see some of the videos from there and uh, and to hear what you have to say and what you yeah. learned this time around. Yeah, yeah me you know, too. It's so funny because it's not like you ever learn anything new. It's all you know, the same. After it's a certain like point, after 10 years, you know, you, 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 you've heard it all. And, and yeah. I can only imagine for the students, but there's students there who have been there for literally 10 to 15 years in every lecture in every in every single one and they keep going they just keep going back they're it's, hearing this they've heard the same things right some in in certain instances like hundreds of times right and they have that dedication they're it, it, they're, it, and those are the ones too that i never see those those guys tune out they're they're always like always present for just the different nuance of the way it's taught because then they embody it just in a different way. Yeah. In a different way. It's, it's, that, it's pretty amazing. It's that one little things for themselves. And, and what I really dig about that is, is that quality of the, or that attitude of mastery and excellence. Mm-hmm. You right. know, and, and they're taking, it's like, they're just, they're going to be excellent in the way that they hold and carry themselves. Right. I Absolutely. just think that's so inspiring. I mean, for me, I mean, hopefully some of my clients are listening. I have amazing clients. I have a lot of students, you know, I could call my, like refer to myself as a teacher, trainer, coach. Uh, yet when I go there, everyone else is my teacher. Like uh, the, there's just, I just go in, like I'm just swooping in and to learn whatever I can, because, you know, you walk into a place like the Vedanta Academy where people live there and study every single day, there's something to learn. Yeah. From it, every human. From everybody there, because they've all made a commitment right. that very few people on the planet will actually ever make. Exactly. Not that there's anything wrong with not making it, but it is it is such a high it's level of commitment. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, it, it really is extraordinary. Um, that choice and all the things that went into that and yeah. for them to see it through just to even do the three year course, let alone those who stick around mm-hmm. the academy and the community for, you know, years right. and years afterward in order yeah. to serve and to be a part of it. It's, it's just truly extraordinary to meet human beings like that, but they're not all weird, you know, like they're, they're, I mean, they're doctors, think, they're yeah. business owners, they're students. I mean, it's an amazing group. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, what's cool about it is like, they're not like super weirdos that are, you know, that are out there, uh, (laughs) you know, they like putting oil all over themselves and doing rituals and things like that. There's nothing like that. Like they're just like, they're super grounded. They're there to get the knowledge. They're just there for the knowledge. And like Kisma said, you know, there's, there's doctors and lawyers and then there's kids, you know, well, kids Mm -hmm. to us. I mean, they're, you know, they're young. 20 year olds, 25 year olds. Yeah. It's extraordinary. And everything in between. It's just the most amazing thing. And they're all amazing human beings who have just made this commitment to themselves that is really beyond a lot of people's comprehension. Yeah. So I'm excited. So everyone join me over on Instagram, Kisma Awake or Codes of Consciousness, kismaawake.com forward slash groups. Check out my Facebook profile too. I'll do my best to get some info out there. Would love to share the trip with you. Yeah, I can't wait to hear all about it. Yay. Yeah. In the meantime, what we've got coming up uh, is the I'm gonna we're gonna we have a really cool guest coming on soon. Yeah, that'll be next week. Probably, Fingers right? crossed. Yeah. yeah, if everything goes according or it to might plan. Be after my India stuff, so yeah. probably post some India things, and then Mark will be on. Yeah. So regardless, we've got stuff coming from India, from the Kisma, the great and powerful Kisma and all her <laughs> insights. We've got a super, super cool guest coming on. And, uh, and that's what you can, you know, that's what you can look forward to. And by the way, I've been talking to people and, and getting some feedback about the, uh, spiritual detox series. Yeah. They love it. Like that's it's so cool. they're just getting so much out of it. So if you haven't checked that one out, go back and listen to the spiritual detox series. And before that, if you scroll back even a little bit further is the working with the law series is another yeah, one that people are that's super been enjoying. Episode one, two, three is working with the law yeah. and the spiritual detox, I think is around like one, four, three or something. Yeah. One, I think it starts with one, four, two, actually. One, four, two. Yeah. Um, Great but right, right around in there. So scroll back and enjoy them and uh, give a share and give a like. And boy, if you're so inclined, give us a review. Like we read all those personally. I know it's a big ask. 
but we appreciate <laughs> you. It goes a long ways to getting the word out there. Uh, but I think biggest of all is, is if there's something in here that really spoke to you, uh, to share it, you know, share mm-hmm. it with somebody that yeah. would get something out of it or that you think would really enjoy it, you know, it spreads yeah. a little bit more light in the world. It helps those folks to, you know, maybe hear things from a different perspective and, uh, makes the world a happier place. Absolutely. Well, thanks for being here, everyone. Much love and namaste. Peace. Hey, thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste. Namaste.